The man, the virtuoso, the axe master, the zen god of guitar, Buckethead. Buckethead is a guitar virtuoso from California. Known primarily for his unmatched skill with the electric guitar, he has produced well over 300 albums to date. And Guitar World Magazine voted him the 8th fastest shredder of all time. Though he played lead guitar for Guns N' Roses from 2000 to 2004, Buckethead first came to prominence in the early 90s with his post-Paul Gilbert style licks, kinky harmonics, and disembodied style. The Buckethead character is supposedly a robot who covers his face with a white expressionless mask. He was also raised by chickens and wears a KFC bucket on his head in commemoration of his deceased chicken family, who was turned into fried chicken by Colonel Sanders. Buckethead's mission is to alert the world of the ongoing chicken onslaught and seeks vengeance for his chicken family. While the whole chicken backstory is interesting in and of itself, Buckethead is a must-know artist because of how much he excels in three distinct ways. His skill, his personality, and his creativity. So let's look into all these. First off, skill. To truly understand Buckethead's assiduous skill with the guitar, it is best to have some historical context. During the early 80s and even early 90s, there were a ton of shred guitars who took guitar to the next level. You had Ingve Malmsteen's crazy fast arpeggios, Ada Van Halen's tapping, Paul Gilbert's string skipping, and Sean Lane's nasty wasty lightning fast licks. Each guitarist was playing fast, difficult kinds of music, but over time you pretty much get to a point to where you've discovered everything there is to know about guitar. Discovering a new technique is very rare. This is where Buckethead comes in. One of Buckethead's most characteristic looks is what he calls nubbing. It is basically tapping the fretboard of the guitar with either two or three or even four fingers from your right hand while pulling off with the fingers on your left hand. Nubbing may seem like just a bunch of random noodling on the fretboard, but Buckethead actually follows a classical music structure that dates back to the medieval era. Buckethead can comfortably nub his guitar close to 20 notes per second. Buckethead wanted to discover how to make an unimaginably crazy lick that sounded like a malfunctioning computer. And believe it or not, he discovered it by accident. Not only did Buckethead discover a new way to play the guitar that no one had really ever expounded upon, but it actually sounded like a perfect fit for a robot guitarist like Buckethead. Buckethead is easily regarded as one of the technical experts of guitar, but he is one of the few people who have implemented new techniques. Nubbing is a technique that is not only cool to watch and is really fast and stuff, it is also musically applicable to Buckethead's character. Personally, I think that takes pure genius to pull off. Next on the list is Buckethead's personality. Buckethead is primarily a solo artist. He has been part of dozens of other projects and has played his guitar for tons of other bands and groups but he works best on his own. Why is this such a big deal? Lots of people prefer solo projects, right? Well, remember when I said Bucket had played for Guns N' Roses? I would say that the main reason why he no longer plays for them is because he hated being in a big name band. As soon as he left, he immediately started producing his own music, playing in underground shows with just a few hundred people, and did his best to put out all the GNR contracts and lawyers and put them all behind him. Bucket had produces music for music's sake. Buckethead was even offered a deal with Sony, which could have made Buckethead a much more prominent, famous, and rich guitarist than he could have imagined. However, he declined that offer. Buckethead produces music for music's sake. He has no interest in fame, money, or prominence. He just likes making good music and offering the world what he does best. Buckethead is also one of the nicest guitarists on the planet. Prior to every show he plays, he and his assistant, P. Sticks, go to a nearby store to buy a bunch of toys to fill a large sack. And halfway through the concert, he gives the toys to the audience and asks nothing in return. The toys are not anything elaborate or anything. They range from Hot Wheel cars to puzzles and sometimes even white masks like his. But he plays at approximately 30 to 40 different venues every year. And buying about 25 toys for each of them would cost him thousands of dollars. Does he have to do that? No. He does it not because the toys are anything super special, but just because he wants to. Buckethead loves his fans and enjoys giving something back to them any way he can. To Buckethead, it is not about the money. It's about the music and the experience. Frequently, Buckethead's website allows you to download one of his albums for only two bucks. Where other guitarists release new albums and charge around $25, Buckethead charges two. Again, the man has no regard to money. It is about the music and his fans. 
Also, aside from the toy exchange, lately he has started letting people touch his kill switch during concerts. A kill switch is a fancy red button that pauses the sound coming from the guitar when pressed. Buckethead is also kind of popularizing this style of playing, by the way. But from time to time, he lets people press it during a song just for fun. Heck, one time he even let a huge fan of his play one of his iconic songs on Buckethead's personal guitar on stage with him. Who else does this kind of stuff? Once again, Buckethead makes music for music's sake and loves his fans and gives back to them frequently. What an honorable way to conduct your music career. Finally, his creativity. Remember, Buckethead has produced over 300 solo albums. This does not include his collaborations. Buckethead has been a part of over 475 projects outside of his solo work, but his solo work alone has produced 163 hours of studio time. To listen to all of Buckethead's solo work, not including collaborations, you would need an entire week. No sleep, no stopping. How does a man produce that much music? First of all, remember to Buckethead, it is about the music. He loves producing music, but also he is a multi-instrumentalist and has mastered several different genres. Some people who are vaguely familiar with Buckethead might accuse him of only knowing how to shred, but they couldn't be more wrong. The man can play bluegrass, funk, pop, and ambient soulful music. Some of my favorite Buckethead tracks are songs that frequently make me cry. Check this one out. Buckethead is also an astounding bassist. One time he even won an online contest where people voted as to who was the best bassist given a certain list of prominent bassists, including Les Claypool and The Flea. He also plays banjo quite well. In short, the man always has something new to listen to. If you're sick of hearing mindless shred guitar, he has some songs that can put your soul in a good place. If you're in a funky mood, he has the perfect remedy. His music never gets old. In conclusion, the man is a living multitude. He has the ability, he has the cool factor, he has the creativity, but most of all, he is a great guy. If you have any questions about Buckethead, then leave them in the comments section, and I or another fellow Buckethead disciple can answer it for you. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I hope you come to love Buckethead half as much as I do.